Recently I tweeted out this picture and when I did so, I got quite an interesting response from everybody who's following me on Twitter. Now I thought that maybe this is a good opportunity to make actually take this picture and expose it to a wider audience since a lot of people seem to have been quite surprised at what they're seeing. So what you're seeing right here is obviously a plane that seems to have some kind of hula hoop around it. And the question of course is what what's going on? Why, why is there a World War II aircraft with this hoop around it? Um, and you know, what's it doing? Now, to answer this question, we actually have to look at what was happening early on in the war and more of the Navy side, really. Now, what we had during the early stages of the war is, of course, uh, the Germans using a lot of mines, sea mines, to attack, or not really specifically attack, but to block, for example, uh, canal inlets or the most uh, prominent roads of convoys and merchant shipping towards uh, the UK, towards Britain. Now, usually mines uh, in the ocean or sea mines uh, are contact mines. That means, of course, the ship has to make physical contact with the mine and then the mine will do its best to blow that ship to kingdom come. Now, during World War II, the Germans came up with a magnetic mine or sometimes it's also called an influence mine. Of course, a ship has a magnetic field around it. It's kind of a quote-unquote aura and the mine will get triggered by this magnetic field and then blow up. And this of course means that the mine does not have to make physical contact with the actual ship and is thus a lot more dangerous, especially because you don't always see them. Now when this was going on, the Brits were quite concerned about what was happening because countermeasures against this sort of mine, at least at this point in time, were fairly slim. So the government put a very high priority on trying to find a German magnetic mine and eventually it did. I think it was a German aircraft that actually dropped it in the wrong spot in very shallow water and the Brits noticed this and ran over to the mine. Uh, previously they had put everything that is metal off their clothes, even they took off their shoes and anything, ran over to the mine, disarmed it and then had a look at it. And they realized that indeed this mine is being detonated by a magnetic field that the ships create. So somehow they either have to get rid of this magnetic field that every ship has, or they have to find a way to explode the mine before it gets close enough to a ship. Now one of the things they did is to try to degauss a ship so that the mines are less likely to explode when the ship gets closed. However, they also tried other things. And this is where we turn towards this image right here. Now what you see here is a Wellington and as you can tell, it obviously has all its defensive armament removed. The front turret isn't there. The back turret, you can't see it, but it isn't there either. And it is simply just a flying ship with a hula hoop around it. Now, this Wellington is called the Wellington DVI. And DVI is standing for Directional Wireless Installation. And what it is, essentially, is a balsa wood hoop that is installed around the aircraft. It has a diameter of roughly 50 meters, that's like 50 feet or something. And inside this balsa wood ring or hoop, there is a aluminum coil. And inside the actual aircraft, there is an engine driving an electric generator. And this creates an artificial magnetic field around the aircraft. So what the Brits try to do with this aircraft is quite simple. They build a couple of these, not too many, but a couple. And what they would do is they would fly over the sea in a formation to cover as wide an area as possible, trying to use this magnetic field generated by this DVI installation to detonate mines remotely. Now, this was, of course, a quite a perilous task. Um, and it was also a very uncomfortable task. I actually found a British propaganda video from 1943, and I'll be linking it down in the description, where the narrator essentially says that due to the, uh, at least this is how I understand it, due to the uh, engine that is inside the aircraft driving the electrical generator, the fumes and so on make the f crew feel quite un you know, uncomfortable. They, they essentially feel nauseous. It's not really a nice thing to have an engine running inside a closed compartment, obviously. But next to the discomfort that this would create, the actual task of detonating these mines remotely is quite dangerous. Because they didn't really have a huge magnetic field, it was quite localized, they had to fly quite low and quite slow. And from what I understand, the typical altitudes when these Wellingtons were used was roughly 10 to 20 meters above the surface of the water, yeah? That's like 35 to, to 60 to 70 feet. And the problem here is, of course, if you fly too high, 
then the magnetic field is not going to detonate the mines. If you fly, fly too fast, then there is also a chance that the magnetic mine will not detonate, because you've got to remember, ships, they obviously go at maybe, let's say, between 20 to 30 knots, while aircraft go five, six times the speed of that. So they have to fly slow and low. And if they fly too low, or let's say too slow, then the exploding mine might, in fact, endanger the aircraft and by doing so the crew. If you've ever seen an underwater explosion, I'm sure a lot of you guys have there, you can find them on, on YouTube as well. You'll see this huge jet of water coming up and you don't want to be inside that jet or be lifted up by that jet of water uh, when you're in an aircraft. And the crews, as far as I know, there's never been really an accident happening to these crews. Every single mission uh, was successful in the way that the crews came back, but they would feel these mines detonating below them. Now, there weren't a lot of aircraft built, as I already mentioned, but there's quite a few of them. And I think this is quite an interesting aspect of World War II in aviation, because it goes to show that for every invention, there is a sort of counter-invention. And in warfare, of course, R&D, research and development, and new technology is critical in trying to get the upper hand over the adversary. Of course, the Germans initially had it with the magnetic mines. The Brits didn't know what to do about that. But then they came up with a couple of solutions, one of these being, of course, the Wellington DVI or the DVI installation, and they uh, kind of countered this threat. I, I will mention, though, he, however, this is not a uniquely British invention. The Brits probably used it most. Uh, but for example, this is an image of a Ju-52, that's a German Junkers aircraft, also with this kind of same kind of installation. The, the Germans called this Minensuch, yeah, mine searching. And sadly, the image is a little bit uh, hazy, but due to copyright issues, this was pretty much the only one I think I can actually use. And of course, they would also go off uh, searching magnetic mines after they became more prominent. I think the Germans even had to blow up their own mines sometimes, especially up in Norway, but I'm not quite sure about that. I, I guess I'd have to look into it a little bit more, what these um, uh, Ju-52s were actually doing. As there were some other German aircraft that had the same kind of loop. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that. And if you have any questions, then feel free to put them below. I'm sure quite a few knowledgeable uh, viewers will also be adding some insight into this uh, hoop. Please do so if you have any kind of uh, specific knowledge about that. I would be interested to know a little bit more about it as well. And if you enjoyed this video, feel free to pass by those like buttons on your way out. Make sure you share this video with your friends. And as always, I hope you have a great day, good hunting, and see you in the sky.